we will be in a little bit of a Q&A. Um, I'm going to just go back from the Afghan students a little bit and come straight to you. You are an architect and when you and I drive by Bombay sometimes in the car together, you, you have a vision when you look at the city as an architect and someone who understands construction, you have a vision for the city on the water. Would you like to tell us a little bit about what, what kind of vision you had for Kabul as somebody from Kabul who ran for election? What would you have liked to see in Kabul and how much of that had actually been developed when, when you were there last time? Well, actually, uh, to be honest, when the Afghanistan, uh, it was the, uh, 20 years ago, Afghanistan was completely, uh, it was a, like a, a, a like a, a place that it was ruined, nothing was there. So no building, no houses, um, very small mad houses were existed due to the war we had it in the past 20 years before. Uh, so of course, when we, everybody would, um, would come back to Afghanistan, uh, they wanted to, to see a, a, a development, not only a structural development, development regarding the education of the, uh, our youth, especially women. In the past 20 years, there was a lot of progress happened. Well, actually, my, my vision was different because uh, we have a beautiful mountains uh, and from an architect, I always wanted to, to build the houses or high rises and the uh, mountains and leave the field open uh, for its greenery and architecture and for the beauty of the, uh, to, to make an, a, a city beautiful. Uh, which is uh, once I selected to become the minister uh, also uh, for urban development, but it didn't happen. And uh, actually I shared my uh, view and also my plans that I had for the city uh, with the uh, president. But uh, in past 20 years, a lot of uh, uh, development happened regarding what we're saying that empowerment of women. Let's, uh, let's uh, uh, as a woman, uh, let me talk about that. Women, we had the entrepreneurs, uh, we had the social activists, uh, we had uh, uh, singers, we had uh, um, uh, ministers, we had uh, parliamentarians, uh, so, uh, and also provincial councillors, uh, and also a lot of doctors, we had the engineers, uh, uh, TV anchors. So um, in the past 20 years, there was a lot of development. And now we have so many, if you can see that we have before uh, in Afghanistan, a woman were not allowed to go to the schools. And now we have students in India, which is they are studying far from their homes. I'm talking about the uh, girls, not talking about the boys. Of course, uh, men are always free everywhere. Uh, but in Afghanistan, yes, there was a lot of development happen, and uh, um, we are hoping uh, that uh, uh, that development doesn't stop, especially for women, uh, and Afghanistan move forward. Uh, and this half uh, uh, population, which is uh, our women in Afghanistan, due to the war, uh, we have a lot of widows and a lot of uh, women are suffering. They will be able to be part of the. Uh, development of Afghanistan and work shoulder uh, to shoulder with the men of Afghanistan. Uh, that's, uh, you know, uh, yeah. that's all I can say. So thank you. In You're some welcome. sense then, Afghanistan has really become a matriarchal society in many ways, since many of the men have, have been lost at war and the women have, are now left to fend for themselves. So in that sense, the, the struggle for the, the empowerment of women, I think, has been unique. And Afghanistan is also unique in the world to now have many families that are led by women that comprise entirely of women. Yes. And in the, how have they managed? We're not talking about what's going to go ahead now, but in the past few years, how has that been empowered? Did most of them move to the cities? Or was it also in the rural areas that they were able to manage these women-led families? Well, actually, uh, to be honest, uh, more development happened in the cities and the rural areas still, uh, there was a difficulties and a lot of struggles. And uh, uh, we do wanted it uh, to, uh, that development or the empowerment goes to the rural area also. No, they were struggling. And so the women led families in that, did, if they moved to the cities, they were able to lead their professional lives. 
right? They were yeah, able they were, to you know, become, as you were saying. There's some work, you know, even for um, same thing, you know, if you go come to um, India, even though I've been living here for almost one year, I see there is not much of development in uh, rural areas. Still, you know, some people are going and changing their life. You know, a lot of women doesn't go to school or they're working or they're going for work. You know, there are a lot of even young comes um, work as a maid uh, for a lot of, uh, because they are not able to get an education or some certain of the problems they have. In Afghanistan, too, there is, is the, the culture that we have that mixed uh, uh, with a, a lot of problems uh, because of the... Uh, because of the war, you know, 40 years of war in Afghanistan has caused a lot of damages. Uh, and for that reason, you know, that uh, our rural area was very far uh, from the cities and there, there was a big distance between them. Okay, so that hasn't, and hope that would have been something to look forward to, to look forward to that kind of development. Yes, um, yes, absolutely, absolutely. And Kabul is a city, and Kandahar is a city have changed dramatically uh, yeah. over 20 years, right? Yeah. They've been, they've become, you still have that beautiful river, the Kabul River, where poets go and walk. Uh, people forget how romantic Afghanistan is, I think, as a city. So it is um, the most beautiful city. I think uh, I, I didn't like the development lately, <laughs> structure, but I believe that by weather and fruits and vegetables and people, it is the most beautiful city, not only Kabul, we have a very, a lot of, a lot of beautiful provinces and cities as well. And we have in us cities like uh, Herat, Kandahar, uh, Nangrahar, uh, Khost, uh, mazar sharif Parwan, Kabul, which is, were very advanced cities. Uh, can we talk, I, mean, I, know, this, yeah. Yeah. I know that uh, trade is also very dear to our heart. Um, uh, Zakia, can you tell us a little bit about the India-Afghan trade and how much it's progressed and where it's, it is at now? Actually, um, last year, uh, even though there was a, a, a pandemic time, we reached our life about $1.5 billion of trade uh, between Afghanistan and India. Uh, we were aimed to raise it uh, this year and next year to three to five billion. Uh, mm -hmm. So the reason is that uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, love uh, for the uh, fruits of Afghanistan, for the dry fruits of Afghanistan and in India, and also for Zafaran and Hing. And from Afghanistan, from India side is that rice uh, and uh, um, uh, sugar uh, and uh, uh, cooking oil. These are the three main major uh, ex uh, and you know, the uh, products that we were going to Afghanistan beside fashion, of course, clothing, all this uh, beautiful uh, 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 clothes that uh, India has and uh, um, handicrafts, uh, all the stuff that between Afghanistan and India that's what happened. But the major uh, uh, was it, uh, also we have a uh, beautiful uh, stones, precious stones, which is uh, more in uh, uh, Jaipur. Uh, I think that the biggest uh, uh, buyers for this uh, in, uh, they are existing in Jaipur, but uh, mostly our, our, uh, these uh, products that I named it, they are the main uh, source of the trace between India and Afghanistan. And uh, when you look at the trade just now, is it still continuing? I mean, are things managing to get, to get across the land borders or has that stopped completely? I believe no matter what kind of uh, government is going to be existing or what's going to come, uh, the trades will always happen. It will never stop uh, uh, because of uh, Afghanistan's people needs to sell their products and also the some of the uh, needful things that were Afghanistan uh, should go to Afghanistan. So the trades will uh, uh, will not stop unless the government of India uh, announced that uh, there is no trades happening or nothing is happening, which is right now, there's nothing, uh, such a things. Um, so, yes. So you will. mean the trade is now, since there are no flights, the trade will now take place in the old fashioned way, right? Along the old road routes and it the old slow. trade routes. It is slow due to the, um, uh, because of the, the, um, the banks are frozen, I mean, the funds are frozen. Uh, due to that, the, the, the trade is just slow, but it's not gonna be staying like that. 
forever. So the, the, the trades must go on, you know, because uh, uh, that's the only source of economically when you want to empower uh, each country or each other or friends uh, as a friend in the, the friendship that India and Afghanistan has. Uh, they also, they must empower each other economically. It's the first thing. And so Zaki, I must ask you, where can we find these wonderful Afghan goods in Bombay? Goods. If anybody in this group wants to go and find good Afghan trade uh, dry fruits, where should we go? Well, actually, there's so many Afghans also has a stores and there's some uh, um, wholesalers, which is, I don't know the name of the markets, but there's some wholesalers and also there are some uh, um, stores that they are selling up on, uh, uh, and mostly I believe the uh, the dry fruits you see outside is from Afghanistan. Okay, wonderful. So I don't know. I mean, many many people on this group will have had parents who have who will have only eaten Kandahari grapes, or who will have only eaten watermelons from Afghanistan. And when you take the flight, everybody comes back with a small suitcase and large, large bags of watermelons and grapes. It's really quite, quite remarkable. And I think this is embedded in people's memories. Absolutely. And also do not forget that we have an, a, um, uh, a zafaran. Mitaji yes. company used to bring a zafaran and you sell it as an, uh, an Indian products. So uh, luckily I met with them and I tell them and they said they know uh, since the Kashmiri zafaran is the best uh, zafaran, so uh, we are selling it uh, as a Kashmiri. I said, that's not right. You know, you have to sell your Avon products under the Avon uh, name because people, well, you will find a special kind of uh, customers for it. Uh, and they will know as long as they saw this is from Afghanistan, they will buy it. You know, we, you you will uh, uh, create an, uh, so they, he listened to me and thank God, you know, we launched it a few months ago. Uh, has new brand within under uh, it's, it's, it's the, uh, made in Afghanistan. The product is from Afghanistan. So, which is, was uh, one of my biggest achievements. Uh, and I was looking forward to do if anybody else is doing the same thing to do the same thing with them. Uh, but uh, I believe that uh, India and Afghanistan's uh, friendship is uh, deeper than what we think because we live in each other's heart uh, by the history. Um, by our uh, the, by the trade and um, by the uh, impression that we are leaving in, on each other uh, when since we are there for each other and and so much similarity we have as a, from the looks to the clothing to the way we have uh, weddings uh, all the stuff so all and uh, mix it together and and it's and then we have we, that's why we are. Um, uh, reaching out to each other easily, you know, I can, you know, I, I can uh, convince my uh, an Indian faster than an, an, a white person. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> That's good to know. So Zakia has spent many years in the United States, and she understands this very well. So I think that we can um, can we open it, Shanaz, now to Q and A from, sure, from the sure, audience. Honey. Yeah. Yes. Sure. So sure. we open it up to Q and A. You can either ask the question or you can type it in. Uh, into the um, into the chat box, and I can uh, I can uh, just uh, we can read ask it. the question. Yeah, we can read it. Yeah. yeah. So we already have people who have talked about the trade outlook. And uh, does anybody have uh, any questions? Put up your hand and let me know. Uh, yes, yeah. Shonas. Yeah, I, I'd like to ask you Surely. a question, Zakia. Um, as Consul General, what did you hope to achieve in uh, Bombay? Uh, what is your vision and what do you hope to achieve? Well, actually, my biggest achievements, which is I wanted it, is that uh, uh, make the roots of trades uh, stronger and also the cultural relationship between Afghanistan and India, uh, which was uh, music uh, and also clothing, uh, fashion. Uh, I wanted to make that bring that closer, uh, especially when at that time I was introducing a one film uh, to uh, some of the uh, directors and uh, over here and some of the screen players and all of that. Uh, so all of a sudden, you know, they had a few meetings. So the my main was is that education, trade, and culture. So I just wanted to uh, achieve, uh, which is I already have some achievement and trade. Uh, and also regarding the uh, 
culture. Um, because of the pandemic, I was not able to have a lot of some meetings. Uh, a lot of people uh, did not want to meet, uh, but still uh, um, I made uh, like uh, Anuradha Paul, the first uh, woman who was a tabla player, she um, dedicated one of her uh, song to Afghanistan's woman and also Rahul said uh, he also, one of his song he dedicated to Afghanistan. So, and I was reaching out to the AR Rahman. So, so like that, uh, I was trying to do and looking forward to also uh, have uh, more empowerment of women, connecting women of India with Afghanistan's women. Uh, so that was my main, uh, yeah, that's really what I wanted to do. And I'm still- I hope, to do it. I hope that you can continue to do it. I hope that you will have the opportunity to continue, especially the cultural exchange. Yes. We look forward to that. Definitely. I think there's a question uh, from yes. Mudit. Yes. What is responsible for the fierce Afghan spirit which has retained it from being conquered by superpowers. It is fiercely independent country. So uh, he's asked you, what is the special spirit, the Afghanistani spirit that, can you talk about that? Uh, I didn't get the answer. Can you one more time explain it to me a little bit? Can I read it out, Shani? Uh, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, what is the question? Is Zakia, what is responsible for the fierce Afghan spirit that has prevented it from being conquered by superpowers? Afghanistan is a very fiercely independent country. Well, <laughs> we should ask the warriors. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, um, Afghanistan people doesn't want it to be conquered by anybody. They want to, they do not want to be ruled by anyone. So even that, uh, that's why they're always. Uh, uh, became in a kind of country that no one can <laughs> could rule it <laughs> but themselves. <laughs> and and what is that inside that spirit inside that Afghans have? It that age old spirit. Well, actually, it's uh, um, maybe they are, are born and raised, and, and also it's, it's always uh, left in them that uh, some kind of uh, but how I can explain it that. Uh, some kind of a dignity, or just they just want they don't want it to be uh, uh, to be ruled by someone. Thank you. Um, I think the next question is from Mayank Kumar. You mentioned annual trade with India is one point five billion. Yes. What percentage of the total international trade of Afghanistan would that be? So is with India quite large, the percentage? The first uh, uh, trade that we had, which is the large amount was between Afghanistan and Pakistan because it was very, uh, I mean, that uh, uh, it was, uh, uh, the transportation was very easy to go uh, and cross the border. Uh, so it was around like 5 billion. And the second place is India. Okay, and, and with USA? Oh, I don't know the number, but it's not that much, but maybe half of or less than half of uh, uh, India. Okay, so I think it's it the be, proximity it be... that also counts. Right. And also, um, Zakia, maybe with, uh, with the US, I think a lot, of will, a lot of it will have been US aid engagement yes. rather than actual trade. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, uh, that would be. I think Renu Basu has said it's a difficult question and concerns most people. I'm very concerned about the future of women. How can we make a difference? So she's asking whether we can support or make a difference to the Afghanistan women. You, you can make a big difference by supporting uh, Afghan women, uh, you know, raising your voices and their rights. Uh, by, uh, um, uh, you know, one is that the connecting, one with an Afghanistan woman can connect it with an Indian woman to work together and, and, and economically can be empowered. The second one is to the women of our India should raise their voices in support of Afghanistan that the Afghan women are not alone and we are with them. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh... I think Rohini wants to ask a question. Rohini? 
unmute yourself. Yes. Can I add something to that? Of those Afghan women right now, we have a lot of uh, refugee people in here in Afghanistan and, and India uh, uh, due to this uncertain situation. Uh, and most of them actually is living in, in Delhi. Uh, very small amount, a very, very small amount in Mumbai, Marshatra. If you guys can somehow help them with um, creating <laughs> jobs or something, uh, you know, I said, connect with them, that will be also will be part of the empowerment and support. Thank you. Uh, Zaki, I'm Dr. Chaugle, uh, Rohini Chaugle, and I have a lot of patients from Afghanistan. And I find them very loyal, very, uh, you know, very, uh, I mean, they're very generous and all. And do you think all this nature of this Afghan nature, which we've heard from childhood time, like, Kabuliwala. Do you think that has changed in Afghan with this war and all, or people are still the same, or the war has done some some effect on them, nature-wise? Even though there is a, a war in Afghanistan, people have suffered uh, in past forty years, uh, and uh, but they still they have this charm in them. They are very kind. They are very sweet, understanding. They are very loyal. Uh, and they are very uh, given people. So they have not lost that, but yes, I mean, the, the trauma is there. Um, sometimes, you know, the, 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 the uh, people get poor, people, people get hurt, you know, many people in Afghanistan, everybody has lost in their family, one, four, five, five people. I have lost more than five people in my uh, family, my brother, my husband, my niece, my, uh, my another nephew, another nephew of mine, very close by my father. So I lost all of them to the war, uh, uh, but uh, um, I'm still here. I am. Uh, uh, I, I I love India. I love Indians. Um, as I said, that my most friends are Indians. Uh, even when I was in the United States, uh, and uh, I still care about people, uh, with whoever are in the need, and no matter where they are. And I care a lot about women, and I will do. I always. Whatever is in my power, I will always do my best to empower another woman. So um, maybe I can be an example of them. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, there is a question from Dhruv Shetty. Jamshed about... Banerjee before that. Okay. Yes, Jamshed. When do you believe it will be safe to visit Afghanistan? That's the question. Uh, Afghanistan is very safe right now. <laughs> you <want to> know. <laughs> Actually, um, it is safe. Okay. <laughs> um, is the next question, uh, honey, Manjit, is that question? Well, ask it, and Zakia doesn't have to answer it if she doesn't want to. So, do you want to it's ask okay. it? <laughs> No, I just, um, regarding the safety, I just think that uh, um, it depends uh, on situation. Uh, it is very safe for foreigners to go to Afghanistan right now. Even right now, for uh, uh, situation is different, but uh, you guys can go. Okay. Shani, you can ask the next question. Yeah, the next question is from Dhruv Shetty. He's a Rotractor from Dahin College. Um, after the unfortunate takeover of Taliban over Afghanistan, how do you think the geopolitical relationship between India and Afghanistan will be? Uh, I think we will leave it to uh, India. Uh, we are looking forward that what the India's reaction will be uh, towards uh, this new government. Uh, and I believe that uh, that new government, uh, which is exists in Afghanistan, uh, they are also very keen to be recognized uh, by uh, the international community and especially India. So I think yes, that answers yes, the yeah. question. That as long as India uh, reaches out and the, the relationship should be uh, strong. Yes. yes, it depends on India, how they want. Right. Uh, coming back to your students that you have made such an urgent plea about, Zakia, 
uh, we will certainly uh, put it up in our uh, you know rotary for forums and see what we can do to help you and to help the students you say there are how many students that are in need actually right now if you can say about uh, 600 to 1000 students are in need okay um, and uh, some of them are also in new need of scholarship and tuition right yes yes so yeah. i could i I suppose you have all the details of that. Yes, as I explained it, that uh, we have uh, students who are graduated with this uh, scholarship program, which is called ICCR. And some of them have left already to Afghanistan and they are in Afghanistan and some of them are left here. So for those, we want them to have another scholarship that they, they can move forward and uh, continue with their education, have a second master or a master or a PhD. We have also, as I explained in the self finances that those right now who cannot support themselves because their families are not able to send uh, funds to India uh, because of the bank, because of there is no transaction or they don't know transfer um, um, can happen from uh, Afghanistan. So that's also another issue. Uh, that we want them somehow, if we can find them a scholarship, sponsorship, or internship. The internship has issues because when we um, uh, had an, a, a meeting with the FRRO, they're not changing the visa, um, the a student visa to a work visa. And here the companies are not accepting a student visa. They, are, they cannot give a job to those who has a, a student visa. So that's also an, another issue that we have to work on that. That they can put a certain, but a special kind of occasion that we are in right now, that the Afghan student will be able to work uh, and they have some kind of permission and a permit, a permit of working they should have from the government of India uh, that they, can be, they will be able to work with some of the companies. Uh, so this is also uh, something that we have to work on that. So I'm sure you would be working on that because I don't think we would be able to support anything on that level. But I'm sure at your level, uh, you would be with, you know, talking to the Indian government to try and convert the uh, student visa into a work visa. We do that. We do that. We yeah. are working on that one. But regarding that uh, uh, funds uh, uh, and how we can, can uh, uh, raise funds for the students uh, or putting a pressure on ICCR uh, that uh, they have to uh, uh, fund this, those uh, students who are left behind or they cannot afford to uh, pay for their uh, tuitions uh, if they are in first uh, year or second year or on third year of their studies uh, or final years of their studies, that they will be able, uh, they will be able to uh, uh, fund them uh, for their further education. But I'm sure those funds have already been transferred to Afghanistan, or ha have they not? What happened that every year we have a thousand uh, scholarships. So uh, uh, ICCR can give a better uh, answer for that. For the uh, year 2020, uh, 2021, for year 2000, when the pandemic happened, they completely stopped uh, all the uh, scholarship. And I believe only, if I don't make a mistake, maybe they have the uh, good amount of number, uh, maybe 40 or 50, or I don't know how many people came. Uh, but large amount of people uh, were, uh, their uh, scholarships were uh, canceled. And I have the proof of that because of from, uh, I introduced almost 55 people to the scholarship uh, and they were, um, they were passed the exam and 50 were, of them were uh, able to, they, uh, they're supposed to come to uh, uh, India. So from that 50, only three people would have made it. Uh, they were called to come and that was only in uh, Kerala. So now this year, I believe that I heard that um, some of, most of the students who got at admissions, uh, the ICCR tell them that to uh, do their studies online. So they can uh, study online and they will uh, teach them and whenever if they felt uh, it's the, um, they, can, uh, invite, uh, they can bring them, so that time they will give them a visa. So they're doing online courses. 
So online courses is, I believe, I don't know, it's going to be the same tuition or same amount of money, but at least they are saving money on their living expenses and monthly uh, allowances that they had, uh, and they were giving or they are giving to the students. So that's also a, a, a that amount can be saved. So when they are saving that amount, that can be also transferred to uh, the, those who are in needs. Okay. Right. So thank you so much, uh, Zakia. No. I think we've got a pretty clear picture of what your requirements are, and we'll see what best we can do from our side. Um, honey, was there anything else that you needed to before... Dr. Batra gives his vote of thanks. Well, I think I have two very articulate ladies in Shanaz and in Zakia. I think they've said it all. So thank you very much, Shanaz, for giving us this platform. We really appreciate it because nobody can understand and sympathize more than the Rotary Club um, because it does such good work and really has the biggest heart of all. So thank you very much. That's true. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you so all of you. That's really, um, I have to uh, thank you all. On, uh, uh, as we have, like I said, as we have an example in Afghanistan that you guys, that Rotary Club has built in a school and training center in uh, Nangrahar uh, province of Afghanistan. So that's why uh, I thought, you know, that I believe I found that a best place to uh, uh, ask for help and, and, and seek for help and, and hopefully um, you guys will be able to do uh, something. Every small contribution counts. And thank you so much from bottom of my heart. Thank you, Zakia. Akshay, if you would like to. Sure. Thank you, Madam Zakia, for such a wonderful talk. It gave us a wonderful insight into, uh, you know, the untold story of Afghanistan, the trade, the beauty, uh, the rivers where the poets walk. I mean, we could paint a picture of beauty and grace, which is what Afghanistan stands for. Uh, like I told you, my wife has Afghan roots, so I've heard stories from her father. Uh, but I wish I could visit someday soon and I look forward to that happening. Uh, I really hope you can take all your uh, goals as far as trade and student education and women's uh, welfare forward. And I'm sure with your passion, all that will happen. I must also thank you, Manjeet, for, for moderating the talk so wonderfully as you always do. It's such a pleasure and you always bring out the best from our speakers. Uh, as a token of our appreciation, Madam Vardak, we will... Uh, on your behalf, plant 10 fruit bearing trees at Nilmati Dandwal Gram Panchayat Maharashtra, and the certificate will be forwarded to you shortly. Uh, 